This video is sponsored by Invado Elements, but a bit more about them later on. Taking a look at his feed. So it's really smooth. That makes me think to bring down the clarity. There's lots of teals, real soft teals. Plenty of grain. There is a purplish warm tone in the shadows a lot. We're working with this image here. Anyone inside the course has the DNG to follow along in this. So just download that, re make a copy and then reset it. Follow along in this tutorial. He is also in my course where he teaches seven lessons on his style so you get the raw image presets and you follow along in his tutorials where he takes you start to finish getting his exact style real soft greens to the image i really like the tones in that one there's obviously a bloom real like smoothness to the contrast which will be done with curves and you yeah guys we're also closing in on a hundred lessons from guest editors so their lessons that you get the raw image like Finn here you get the preset and you follow along start to finish and you end up with the exact same results yeah it's pretty exciting because that was a big goal starting out to get to a hundred guest editor lessons inside the course you can check out his presets as well if you come over here nfts and presets here you go here i'll link these up down below as well so a bit more about our sponsor Invado elements so this is the ultimate creators resource they have over 55 million creative assets so that could be fonts that could be photos video templates website themes and adobe templates so you can see them all across here so we can go music sound effects graphics fonts so you may or may not have noticed at the start i used some sound effects and i was super impressed with high quality sound effects they have over here in Envato Element. If you want to save 50% on your annual subscription, use the link down below. Come over and try them out yourself, guys. Otherwise, let's get back to the tutorial. If we reset, there's just a few brushes that are already done, slightly, slightly affected that we'll go over later. But as you can see, this is pretty much where we're starting. So we are trying to recreate this one here. If we look at settings, 1.4. So we want that shallow depth of field. 24 mil low iso because they're at 1.4 and a shutter just to expose it correctly i'd say okay so this one's quite a tricky one to replicate just because of the lighting these are the curves i went for so, so just before i talk about the curves now they're adding in lots of contrast and a fade obviously we just need to drop the contrast shadows and now we'll just talk about what the curves are doing a bit so as you can see they're adding in this fade here so we want this fade. We also get those decently dark blacks, but we get this nice fade. And as for color, so we've got a bit of extra red in there. So that's how we get this purplish red, green, and then we've pulled out quite a bit of blue. So we get a bit more warmth and that's to balance out all this blue that we've got in the image is the warmth added in with the blue curve here. Just your regular S curve, and then this one, like I said, doing a pretty decent fade, especially to the blacks there. So off and on, say if we reset this one, you can see how this one really softens it. So up here, we're gonna cool down the image to bring back a lot of those blues we want. Maybe up the blacks so we can see more. shadows uh, highlights so luminance is going to play a role so if we just quickly do that let's say up the blues up the aquas so this is going to real shine to the water and stuff and it helps expose the image so we're going to do this quite a bit We also enable profile corrections, should have done that before. So this will really get rid of all that vignetting and stuff. So I might quickly whack in a vignette here. What I want to do, I quite often slide this to the right so it doesn't affect the highlights. And let's just make this way more gradual into the middle. Okay. And then while we're here, we'll add in grain. But there's this weird 
weird thing in Lightroom that you can't see the grain. So for now, we'll just keep it up there, but it should be at about 40. Go about there for now. As for colors, we want to add in lots of blues, lots of teals like we see here. And there's also that browns. And this is what the blue primary does a lot. Not so much browns in this image, but we'll definitely get those teals. So it just helps bring these teals in that we're going to be trying to get. So as for split toning, we're going to come to shadows and we're just going to add in a real warmth that try to get these purplish, reddish oranges. So let's go about there. Saturation pretty high. And then we will play with blending. So I'm going to give a favor to the shadows and then blending. I, I just play with this throughout the edit to see how it's looking. And then as for highlights, we're just going to again try to bring out these teals. So we're going to go for a, like a teal, but then I might make it more of a green to really help bring them out. Um, out there and as you can see we're adding in a lot like in a normal image you probably wouldn't add in this much I don't know this is just how I did it it's a rather difficult one to replicate okay so up in saturation let's just bring out these blues maybe you should have done that earlier but these maybe so the aquas maybe like it looks pretty good how it is but what I might do I want like more teals so I might go this way with the blues and then this way with the aquas I think that helps purples not too many in this image oranges look practically nothing greens basically nothing purples not too many reds no picking up any reds and then the hues of these colors shouldn't matter too much uh, back up top we're just gonna drop the clarity for a glow that he very often has to his images I think usually I'd bring it down even further than seven uh, saturation and while we're up here I'll just drop exposure again because it went up a bit when we were playing around with the colors before okay sharpening we're gonna go quite high so around 120 but he has quite a glow to his image and would we'll achieve that by dropping the clarity and maybe the dehaze and yeah if i didn't mention before anyone inside the course has the raw image to follow along in this tutorial you'll actually get the dng so the settings will be already done for you so the curves will already be applied for you and stuff like that and then what you would do is just create a virtual copy which is right here cut off from the recording and then you'd reset the virtual copy and then you'll keep the settings on this just just so you can refer back to it for like just to use as another preset or you don't want to lose a, a good edit to an image so i always keep them applied and don't reset them just make a virtual copy so that's where you run inside the course otherwise we're, we're pretty good uh so i'll just show you some of these filters that we've done not much is going on so we've got like 13 here so i just think like we're just brightening the middle of the image. This is sort of like the focal point of the image, kind of. It's sort of her in the mountain. So we're just, we're just, we just brightened up like in between the two main points. It's just a bit of exposure right in the middle there. Press O to get rid of. So um, we've got the subject here. So a touch of exposure, a touch of contrast. Maybe we have done too much exposure. So my drop that a touch yeah it's a i don't know how he's edited this image so down here at the bottom pressing o so just affecting the bottom so we're, we're framing our two subjects a bit better by darkening the bottom of the image and pushing our eye upward into the in the image so it's just a drop of exposure um, if i press o yeah it's just affecting there so that's all for that one and this is just the all the brushing the water so trying to make everything stand out and the subject a bit bang the before and after of the brush there and yeah we get something like his now the only thing i don't know so if we go to his image so if we actually so this is our image right now if we go over to his image his image and see that the distortion is quite different so 
I'm not actually sure how he's cropped this and distorted it. Um, but if we go back to our image, we have like a different cropping. He somehow made the mountains look wider. I don't know. But yeah, that's why I asked him to be a guest editor in the course because uh, he's got lots of tricks that he teaches in the course about how to, I bet I went a different way of editing this image than how he did it. But um, I think they're kind of similar and yeah, I'd be happy with it either. And I'm kind of like, he sort of desaturated all of her skin where we kept quite a bit of that, like brought it, brought it back. Even though that all the oranges, hardly any oranges, probably because we white balanced it a bit more or we played with the calibration, we were able to actually recover some of those colors in her skin tone where depends what style you're going for but yeah so that's it guys reset after it's a really complicated edit actually because uh we've got the brightness from some brushes we've got brightness from the luminance brightness from curves so you can see how multiple things are, are, are affecting the same area of the image and it can get quite tricky when all these adjustments are overlapping and affecting each other so yeah a really difficult edit guys if you want to learn from finn himself seven lessons in the course guest editor section download his raw images download his preset follow along so yeah if you like these tutorials you should probably join the course because you get the dngs for all these youtube tutorials so then you can follow along in these youtube tutorials you get all those guest editors so my goal right from the start was to create the ultimate color contrast editing course there is and we've definitely done that the way i see it is that you need to understand color and the tools really well which is what i will teach you really in depth how i do these youtube tutorials how i get the perfect contrast the sliders and the curves and how they interact with each other i'll teach you that really nitty gritty stuff how i look at an image and know what it needs and then you go into the guest editor section which is just huge and you get that repetition different styles and you just get that confidence because you have the raw image you get the preset and you, you get the finished looking edit on your computer which is what i so desperately wanted at the start and is actually how i learned really quick was because i was getting these images sent to me trying to recreate so many different styles that's how i learned really quickly and now i've packaged it in the course for you guys if you have any questions let me know down below and yeah as always keep commenting people you want to see on this channel then i can reach out to them i'll ask them to be on this YouTube channel.